Hey, hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Looks like we already have a few people on here. Um, and that is great. Thank you all for being here already. It's already. We've already got four likes too. Now, you saw the title, uh, hopefully, that uh, this is going to be about isopods and the law. I have to thank Heretic Nature. Heretic Nature has a YouTube channel. I encourage you to go check it out. He has uh, recently made a post about this and that's where I learned about it. So I want to give him full credit. Heretic Nature, there's a space between the two. Um, go check him out on YouTube. He has some links in his description to more information about it. Um, so yes, I am going to give the long version or a longer version that goes a little bit more in depth about this and hopefully get the information out to people who don't know it yet because I think there are a lot of people who have heard about this and uh, a lot of people who have not yet heard about it. So I am just um, filling myself in and I'm in the permit process myself. So I just thought I'd point this out. So welcome to Connor Kennedy, to Supreme Gecko, to Cognac Young, and to Kalkanort, and anyone else who's out there who hasn't commented yet. So um, once again, check out Heretic Nature. Wally, since you're a mod, if you are able to post um, a a link to his YouTube channel. That would be awesome. If you can't, that's okay too, but um, a lot of times uh, mods are able to do that. So, okay, it looks like Wally is on that. I'm going to change this to live chat so everybody can get in there. Okay, so there we go. Now, um, a long time ago, I contacted uh, APHIS and Fish and Wildlife. This was years ago to ask them because this is when um, there were people who were starting to get into the European porcelio isopods and stuff like that um, and starting to brown bag them. In other words, they were illegally um, sending them out uh, at the time, sending them to the US. At least they were doing it without any kind of permit or anything like that. And they were kind of worried about it. I was kind of worried about it and I thought I would like to do that, but legally I want to do it completely on the level, legally. So I started contacting people like APHIS and Fish and Wildlife and so on. But I got the runaround. And they um, would not uh, let, they, they, they couldn't commit to anything. They couldn't say, they'd say, oh, you need to talk to these people. You need to talk to these people. I don't know what to tell you. And this was years ago. So um, now we have the actual information, thanks to Heretic Nature. And he is here in the chat. Thank you for joining in. Um, glad that you're, you're here. And uh, Wally has put a link to Heretic Nature's um, YouTube channel here. So you can check that out and... Uh, learn a lot more about it. Brubby TV, welcome. And hopefully we'll have some chance to talk about the Blue Death Hate Fading Beetle Project. It's been fun. Pinchman, welcome. Little Bob, JC, um, and Miley Morkio. Thanks for joining in. So once again, Molly, thanks for uh, putting Heretic Nature's video in there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll be in a little later, okay? Thank you. All right. So, and thanks Dustin and Science Gal Aquatics for coming in too. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about this. So as I understand it, in Heretic Nature, since you're here, you can chime in if you would like to at any point. But the, the basics of this are that in order to sell isopods within the United States, uh, you need a permit. And it doesn't matter uh, where you're selling them. You can sell them to your next door neighbor or you can sell them to someone in a different state. You need a permit. And I believe someone has written the name of the permit. I think it was Connor Kennedy. PPQ 526 permit. You need that permit in order to sell them to anybody anywhere within the United States. Okay, and um, if you're just going to keep isopods, you don't really need um, you don't really need a permit if you're just keeping them and you are getting them within your state. However, if you're getting them from out of state, you do need a permit. the The good thing is that the permits are free. The bad thing is that you have to do it you know it's a process to do the permits and once you have applied for the permits it takes six to eight weeks ish to uh, get the permit so um, the links to the permit are I I under um, where you can start the permitting process not the permit itself but the links to start the permitting process are at uh, heretic nature's uh, YouTube channel in the description to his video that talks about this which is from I think um, the 8th of August if I'm not mistaken and that link is up in high up in the chat uh, Wally at Supreme Gecko um, put that up there for us he's one of our mods so 
Um, thanks again, Molly, for putting that up there. So that's how you'd get that permit. Um, oh, crystal, pets and plants, trigs, and uh, uh, welcome. And I will do a more in-depth care video on the Blue Death Fanny Meadows. Yes, that is in the plan. So I'm glad you're interested in that and I will get there. And huh so in canada it's even harder to get things about isopods that's that's tough and thank you wally i was going to ask you to do that again and you just did so yes so as heretic nature is saying um you get authentication which is the process that i've started i've got first level and i've applied for second level authentication and then um, i'm going to get the permit so i started the process today and hopefully that will be my uh, website i put a post on my stock list saying that isopod sales are kind of on hold for now until um, this thing shakes out and I, I'm able to get my permits. Hopefully I'm able to get my permits. So welcome uh, Sweet Honeycomb as well. So that is, that is the basic thing. If you want to sell isopods within the United States to anyone, you need the permit. And if you're going to buy isopods from outside of your state, you need the permit. And the link is um, there at um, Eli's uh, website, which is um, Heretic Nature, uh, the YouTube channel. It's in the description to his video that uh, Wally has posted there. Wally has posted there. So yeah, I uh, didn't know about this, and when I saw the the link to that video show up, I was I was worried. I was I don't know what's going to happen, what's going on. But the good news is that isopods, um, as Heretic Nature was mentioning, as far as we know, isopods are not going to be banned. They're going to be uh, completely legal and the permits are free so that's it's not going to be a price wall you're not going to have to be rich to make sure you can do this um, that those are the good pieces of news but the bad thing is that if you don't have the permit it's going to be illegal and I think it's important to note that the isopod hobby has exploded a lot in the last few years and really before that they weren't really on anybody's radar and now they are now they're popular enough that they worry about it um, and so we need to make sure that we're on the up and up, that we're doing this right. Um, so, and the good news is also Sweet Honeycomb that uh, you may not have to worry about it if you're only getting isopods locally to you. It may not be an issue. Um, oh, and that's what you're saying now. So yeah, that, uh, it may not be a big problem. And there may be a lot of people who have isopods in your state, the kinds of isopods you want. I mean, I sell a lot of isopods locally I have been selling a lot of isopods locally as well as across state lines and now I'm just going to have to get the permit to continue that in any, um, I'm going to have to just get those permits, that's, that's all there is to it. But uh, yeah, as far as, because I'm selling a lot of them, but if you're just going to keep some, you, you might not. Um, and yeah, that's, that's an important point, as Heretic Nature is saying, we don't know which states are not going to allow any of this because there's going to be a lot of variation in individual states. And um, on, on one hand, I'm really glad uh, that I have, uh, the isopods aren't my only thing. I mean, I do a lot of, I do a lot of things uh, in terms of different animals that I keep. And so if I can't keep isopods, it's not the end of my hobby at all, but I really hope I can because I love isopods and I've, uh, you know, I've got a collection of 30 something types and really, really hope he'll be okay. Um, yeah, so it's only within the USA, that's right. Um, and the funny thing about this is that very few isopods are actually going to be pestiferous in any way, shape, or form. But that aside, it's a law, so we need to respect it. Um, for the good of the hobby as well as for the good of the country, I mean, a lot of people don't see the need for certain laws. Uh, in terms of animal regulation and so on. But, you know, a lot of these creatures that people regulate um, can be pests, such as, uh, you know, phasmids, the walking sticks. Some of them are probably not pests, but the laws are pretty strict here in the U.S. because there are places and or species that could be problematic. Uh, and so they're just trying to be extra careful with that. Or in places like Florida, where a lot of the roaches are illegal because a lot of them could establish populations and who knows what sort of impact that would have in Florida if they weren't regulated. So, um, so Heather, Heather Jensen, isopods, as far as we know, are not going to be taken away, that they will remain legal, but we need, um, 
to get permits to sell them, basically. So that's what's going to happen, I think. And so Supreme Gecko or Little Bob, if you are able to post that link one more time for um, the folks who are just coming in or the folks who have missed it so they can find out that. Um, yeah, and I think that I, I agree. Heretic Nature is talking about um, Armadillidium vulgare are considered pests for a few crops. I've had them min, mm, nibble on my strawberries and things like that. But yeah, but they're very minor. And welcome, Chad. Um, and the permits, Heather, do not cost anything. That's the good thing. They, they're a little bit, they go, you have to go through a process to get them, and I am in that process, but they're not, they don't cost anything to do it. And so my plan is to get a permit for every state uh, in the continental U.S., because that's where I tend to sell them. So um, I'm going to try to do that. I have shipped to many different states and would like to con continue doing that, so I'm going to get permits for all of the contiguous United States. Probably will not get one for Hawaii and probably will not get... Uh, one for uh, Alaska, maybe. I don't know. I'll find out about that. Um, yeah, but no fees for the permit, which is great. I have actually applied for and obtained permits from APHIS before, years ago, uh, for, I think I did for mystery snails and things like that. Um, yes, and you do need a, a permit per genus, or at least you need to apply per genus. Um, so, Wally, can you um, clarify? Are we back? I'm hoping we're back. Okay, I think we're back. Okay, good. So, yeah, so Heretic Nature, thank you for that. Um, they are legal to own, but we need to, here, I'm, I'm too much in the sun. It's weird. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so like the Cuban ones, because there's an embargo against uh, Cuban imports, they're not legal, but uh, things like the Cubara species from the Southeast Asia, Thailand, and neighboring countries are not going to be illegal as far as we know, which is great. Um, yeah, so the permit for DEA exotics, you can find those at Heretic Nature's uh, YouTube channel on his video about this, which is from last week. Um, so you can check that out. Wow. So, so if you want to sell Porcelli and Arbidility in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana, you would need six permits. Well, I'm going to be applying for a lot of them. Oh, Washington is prohibiting sales? I haven't heard about that. Does anybody know about that? That's kind of awful. Um, and Heather, Spanish oranges throwing all, any all-white individuals. Wow. Reproduced in summer, older, and white. I have not seen that. I have seen them throw occasional Dalmatians because of the crossing I did when I produced orange Dalmatians. Once in a while they'll throw a Dalmatian, like an orange Dalmatian typically, but um, I have not seen them do all white. So you may have something new going on there. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. I like that. Um, it may turn out that those are just young Dalmatians, but we'll see. Okay, so you apply for the one permit and then you're um, approving for six state AG offices. Okay, well that, that's going to be a little easier. And Jay's Crazy Obsessions. You need a permit to own if you're purchasing from out of state or to sell no matter where you're selling them. If you just own them and are not selling them and not importing them from out of state, then you do not need a permit. That is my understanding. So. Okay, how are we doing? We're doing okay. I'm just trying to figure out how much time I have. So I think I'm doing all right. Okay, so anybody else have anything they'd like to to chime in on that? Um, Heretic Nature here. Um, cited need for a facility. Wow, okay, that's interesting. I wonder if my uh, my creature breeding room counts as a facility. I don't know. But I'm really glad that Heretic Nature posted that video. I'm really glad that he's here in the live stream to help us out and help uh, clarify some of these points. And uh, that is, it's really cool that you did that. Not everybody's willing to do that legwork, so it's very appreciated. And if Little Bob or Supreme Gecko, you want to 
um, put a link to his site so people can check out the documentation that he has about it. I think that's one of the great things you did in the video. Not only did you talk about um, the basics of what's going on in the video, but you put documentation so people can find out more about it and get the process of permitting started right in your description. So if you could do that again, um, mods, that'd be great. Um, Miley Morky does chain or local pet store sell isopods, mainly pill bugs. I have seen that happened. I've seen that happen. Um, I actually had a local pet store come to me and buy a big bunch of isopods to get started selling them. Uh, that was a while ago and the pet store is kind of far away. It's in my state, but it's kind of far away. So I'm not sure if they're still doing it or not because I don't get down there as often as I'd like to. But yeah, um, that was when I lived closer to them, like maybe five years ago. And uh, so some of them do. Fishaholic, good evening and welcome. And Jay's crazy obsessions found out recently I can get in trouble for selling your fish. Oh, that's awful. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think that's sad, heretic nature, that people got sad, mad at you for making the video. Don't shoot the messenger, right? I mean, you're just, uh, you're just trying to spread the information that we need to help protect people. And I, I totally get that. I'm totally glad that you did it. Oh, so you got some pet stores in Wisconsin, Wally, that are doing that. Um, so, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, T-U-Q-L-Y. Do you think isopods would be good for leopard geckos? I keep um, Porcelionides purinosis, the um, powder blue, with my uh, leopard gecko, and they do great. They're an excellent cleanup crew. It's in a bioactive setup, of course. Um, and Heather Jensen, thinking of putting excessive dairy cows in the tank. For the Pac-Man frog, I'll be getting in a few months to help control my population. You know, that makes a lot of sense because the um, dairy cows are bigger than a lot of isopods and they breed so fast. That, that seems like a pretty viable way to go. A little bit of extra calcium for the, for the Pac-Man frog too. They're probably big enough to be of interest to it, even an adult. Um, and TJ's Exotics, hello. And Miley, do isopods go well with garter or hognose snakes? Um, they can, if you have a proper uh, bioactive substrate, yeah, they can. They can do really well in a situation like that. The nice thing is, with uh, snakes, you don't have to worry about them eating them. They're not going to eat the isopods. Most species of snakes will not. Those two will not. And so, um, keeping them in there, you'll get them breeding fairly uh, robustly. And they will also not only eat uh, snake waste, they will eat snake sheds very fast, as you may have seen in the recent video that I made. And Heretic Nature says, one other thing that I would like to emphasize that I didn't specify in the video as much, this permit allows you to import, but people misunderstood and, only th and think it's the only thing necessary. Ah, I see what you're saying. And so Heretic Nature says, you still need all the other import permits from USFWS to import anything. So that's, that's a good clarification. Um, so if you're just transporting across state lines, the permit is what you need. But if you're importing from other countries, you need extra permits. So very good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So Ideal Drug, how are the duckies for Mitten Exotics? They're doing well. I have not noticed any deaths so far. I have not noticed any breeding yet either. I have noticed some growth, I think, some of the smaller ones. Uh, but I'm hoping that they'll be breeding pretty soon. But yeah, so far doing okay. And so thanks for joining Fishaholic. See you later. And Heather Jensen, does anyone know about restrictions on selling Triopsis polygridae land snails? Um, as far as I know, um, there are, there are regulations in place for most snails. Um, I did some permitting with snails a few years ago. So yes, uh, I would look into that. Most snails need permits for shipping, um, across state lines, but m I'm not sure about all of them, but many of them do. And yes, heretic nature, Dan is good people. He. He was excellent to work with. He was really, really, uh, really great to work with, and I hope to continue working with him in the future. And Miley Morkey, I never knew Russ wrote a book on isopod care. I did, and it was a while ago, but it's still good info. Can still help you take care of isopods. It's mostly intended for kids, um, but I've had adults say I, I enjoyed this book and I learned from this book too. I am working on a, a second edition that includes a lot more updated information, especially new species profiles and things like that but I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get that out. Heather Jensen says, mine, which was a plant hitchhiker, had babies recently, which were adorable, but I don't need 10 more snails. Uh, yeah, good point. So, Heretic Nature's confirming land snails need permits. 
Okay. So cognac young, can we trade within each state without a uh, permit or does it only involve in sale only? I'm not sure about trade, how that works. If it's in state and you're trading, yeah, that's a good question. So Supreme Gecko, how do you see this permit requiring requirement impacting the ISO Vahada hobby, let's say a year in the future, where will we be at? Good question. Um, Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I think, I'm hoping it's going to have minimal impact in that the, the permits are free. But I'm guessing that some of the states may lock down on this. So we may have some states that are no longer going to be hotbeds of isopod, the isopod's hobby anymore. There, there may be some black market stuff going on, which is sad. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see what happens. Uh, there's also always the possibility of the laws changing. But without knowing which states are going to lock down isopods and which states are going to be pretty liberal with them, it's hard to say. Um, but as far as the fact that they're free, I mean, there's no price wall here. I think that really helps. So I'm hopeful that our, our hobby won't be impacted too much. Okay, so Heretic Nature, that is great. If you're doing an exchange in state, you don't need to, I think that's gonna help the hobby a lot. You don't need a permit to do exchange in state, so it might be a hobby that's less um, money driven uh, to some extent, and more of a trade thing. I can see that happening. And Jay's Crazy Obsession, if you wanna buy a copy of my book, you can go to Amazon and look up Roly Poly Pets, and it should come up. Uh, that is, you know, that's the older version of my book, but it's still pretty good. Got a couple of books out. Uh, one's on uh, live foods, raising live foods. It's called The Aquimax Guide to Seven Easy Live Foods, both available on Amazon. And if anybody does buy uh, one of my books, I'm not saying you have to, but if anybody does, I would really appreciate a review on there that really helps to spread the word. I've got some reviews up there, but um, that would be awesome. And Heretic Nature, I see what you're saying, yeah. It might be kind of a, a black market thing. And uh, yes, that would be nice if we can actually um, get, some, get some laws changed to make it a little bit easier. So, there you go. Oh, thank you, Miley Morky. That's a, a good idea. If you just search up isopods on Amazon, you'll, it'll show up. Um, Hey, that's a good idea, Heather. I like it. Use Amazon Smile so you can support nonprofits. Yeah. Cool. And good point. The buyers only need permits if you're getting shipped to you from out of state. So if you go to Reptile Expo in your state, you're okay. Unless you are the seller, in which case you do need the permit. So I'm uh, going to have to get that because I'm thinking of... I might miss this next Reptile Expo because of that. Uh, a reminder to do, get ready for the live stream on my iso on my iPad, my iso pad, uh, and it keeps going off, and I don't know how to shut it off without wrecking the live stream. So that's sad. Uh, permits are sad. I'm I'm frustrated by. I mean, permits are sad. I shouldn't say permits are sad. I should say permits can be frustrating, but um, they can also be helpful. And and. You know, there's, there's a certain balance to be struck there. They can be helpful and help uh, protect our hobby as well. So, but I, I guess I have. This permit also applies to millipedes. Interesting. Okay, that is good to know. Then I'm going to have to uh, do that too. Now, what I want to know too, I, this is a thought that I've had, a question. If I put in a, a permit, request for, for example, Armadillidium and Porcelio. That covers a lot of the isopods I have, but it doesn't cover all of them. Um, and from what I understand, I can always add to it. I can always get a, do a permit request for Armadillidium and Porcelio, and then later request um, to add more to it. I think um, that would be really interesting to find out. Uh, because I would, 
it would be interesting to know if I could apply for Porcellio and Armadillidium, wait until I get approved, and then apply for some other uh, genera of isopods, and then see what happens. Like, does that mean if I apply for Atlantosha floridana, for example, after that and it gets denied, I still get to keep the other two species or whatever? That's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering about. And yes, for right now, uh, Jay's Crazy Obsession, the book is only a digital download. But, uh, okay, so you don't specify species, just do the, the genus, okay. And Ethan Oder Oculus is going on YouTube. Uh, is what going on YouTube? Um, I'm not sure what you mean exactly, but let me know. I'd be happy to clarify. Um, Miley Markey, a bird has a lot with urban livestock recently that has special needs like me to keep one as a pet. Cool. That is cool. Um, so every time you add a, a genus, it will be reviewed for separate approval. Okay, good to know. And DEA exotics, do you think this will start to spread to other things like tarantulas? Probably not. Um, but yeah, there are people who are trying to fight um, us having various pets. But yeah, I agree. I think it's mostly um, what's being targeted is things that eat plants and it's much worse with things that focus on eating live plants like with phasmids, the walking sticks, but uh, it can still, you know, isopods generally eat dead plants. So I think we're, we're lucky there, but it's not like that's the only thing they ever eat. So. A pet inchworm, that would be interesting. So TJ's exotics, um, just getting permits to sell isopods. There's not, as far as we know, there's no plans to ban selling isopods, which is great. I'm grateful for that. Um, we'll see how it goes. But as far as we know, as long as you have the permits, you'll still be able to sell them. The only ones you can't sell are ones that are legal anyway. So, good questions. <laughs> I like that, Heather. I, I, I tend to agree with that. So I think um, just kind of wrapping up here. Uh, thank you to Heretic Nature for joining in. Um, and yeah, I, I, I guess I don't seem as overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive today and this is, this is tough news. This is a hard thing to swallow. Um, and I'm not, not too excited about it. I know we need to deal with it, uh, but I'm, you know, it's, it's not happy news. I wish it were better news. And I'm totally grateful to Heretic Nature for bringing it to our attention. But um, there you go. Thanks again to Heretic Nature. Glad uh, that you were able to join in and really glad that you posted that. Um, so thanks again everybody go check out Heretic Nature's video and look in the description so you can start in the permitting process if you're going to be selling isopods in the future and you can find out more about it even if you're not so you understand exactly what's going on really grateful for that again to Eli for doing that thanks for joining in ah <laughs> I like that Heather too isopod that sounds like a super cool license plate especially if you could make custom like isopod pictures on it but yeah, will you, will you need a permit? Yeah, people should uh, definitely know about this better. But I, I, I like that, Dustin. Um, it's a hoop to jump through, but we'll be okay. Thank you. And um, yeah, I'm Jay's crazy obsession. Thanks for asking. We're, we're doing okay, but that is, it's just kind of hard to deal with. It is available. Nice. And that's a good point, Heretic Nature. If you're going to move out of state, you'd need them. Uh, we need them that, that too. So that's, that's important. Well, everyone, uh, my time's about up. Um, I've got to go have dinner with my family. But uh, thanks for joining in. Thanks again to Eli at Heretic Nature. Check out his um, video on this if you want to know more about it. And we'll make it, guys. Isopods will still be the ones doing our dirty work. And I hope that's not backwards in the video because that would be awkward. <laughs>